Hello, everyone, and welcome. It's great to have you join us. It's a real pleasure to host this exclusive event today with my colleague, Courtney Lundgren. Hi, Courtney. Hi, Emric, and welcome, everyone. We are thrilled to have the opportunity to reveal very exciting news, the launch of IBA Campus. Today, we will welcome leaders in the proton therapy community as well as IBA leading figures who will share their take on the future of proton therapy collaboration. Indeed, Imrik, this is very exciting news for our community, and we're happy to share our insight with you today. Please feel free to ask questions at any time in the chat box, and we'll answer them throughout the session and take some at the end. And without further ado, let me take you on a journey through the world of proton therapy collaboration. We have a short video that sets the scene and hopefully will make you want to know more about campus. Let's watch it together before we introduce our first panel discussion. At IBA, we have been 100% committed to proton therapy for more than 30 years. We've come a long way to get where we are today, at the top of the proton therapy market. Yet, IBA could never have gotten there alone. Everything we've achieved is the result of the strong relationship we've built with our unique community. Because turning our world into a cancer-free world requires a great deal of collaboration, of knowledge sharing, and of joint research. Today, we want to bring this collaboration to the next level, and we gave it a name, Campus. A place where experts, academia, researchers, and entrepreneurs from all over the world have the opportunity to share knowledge with each other and find the information they need at every stage of their proton therapy journey. Campus is a tangible community which meets and interacts in real life. The campus platform is also a single repository, centralizing a large amount of accumulated knowledge and expertise. The campus community will be built on three pillars. Learn to expand your skills. Share by collaborating with your peers. Excel to maximize your center's performance. Whether you are a newcomer willing to accelerate your learning curve, an experienced user looking for developing new expertise, or the most eminent expert keen on sharing your knowledge or expanding your research, Campus is your network to get to and remain at the leading edge of proton therapy and provide the best care for your patients. Join the Campus community now. We now have the pleasure to welcome three special guests from IBA to discuss campus more extensively. So first, Olivier Legrain, our CEO of IBA for the last nine years. Hello, Olivier. Hello, Emeric. Hello, Courtney. Oh. Emmanuel Warney, or the project manager of IBA campus. Hello, everyone. And last but not least, certainly in size, Luc Hermans, the uh, executive vice president of commercial operations at IBA Proton Therapy. Thank you, Emeric and uh, Courtney, and uh, happy to be here. So, Olivier, could you explain us how campus fits in the overall strategy of IBA? I think if you look at the history of IBA, it's an history of collaboration. I mean, uh, we have always been very close to uh, the academics or the, uh, our customers, and nothing would have been possible without a very strong collaboration. I think this is what campus is about. That's what we're going to talk about. Campus is really about how do we connect better uh, you know, our user community, the IBA engineer, so they can collaborate on the next step. Emmanuel, you're the project manager for IBA Campus. Could you tell us a little bit more about the initiative and where the name comes from? Yes, well, actually, this is very straightforward because campus is the best word to describe a place where uh, learning and knowledge sharing are the absolute priorities. Campus is a place where people will be able to interact and to share the best practices. It's also a place for experts to be able to share the latest findings. Also, this word is deeply seated in our roots because, as you may know, IBA originally comes from a spin-off of the University of Louvain. And today we're truly global entrepreneurs with academic roots. So because we originally come from a university campus, we wanted to go back to our roots. And campus is really this interdisciplinary disciplinary hub for every stakeholders that are interested or active in the proton therapy field. 
So how would you describe the platform in just a few words? Well, if we want to remain at the leading edge of proton therapy, we really want the IBA users to be able to excel in cancer treatment. And Campus is the most knowledgeable proton therapy community in the world. It's a community that's built on three pillars, learn to expand your skills, share to collaborate with your peers, and excel in order to maximize your center's performance. So this platform is really a place for interactions with every stakeholders in the community. Thank you, Emmanuel. So, Luc, can you describe how the community can contribute to the campus platform? Yes, of course. Uh, to start with, you know, campus has been built with and for users. And so together with uh, those users, we have put an executive uh, committee together of proton therapy experts from across the world. And this committee together, they will decide, you know, which content should be shared and which content should be driven on this uh, campus platform and you know that will fall in three main buckets like uh, Emmanuel mentioned before you know it will be learn uh, pillar there will be an, uh, a share pillar and there will be an excel pillar and you know this is something we want to grow over time you know we want to grow the content but also we want to grow the community and as we onboard more centers the community will grow organically if we take a step back, and I mean, there's so much things we can still do in proton therapy. It's, it's only in its infancy. I mean, there's so much innovation we can bring. And, and once again, looking at it a little bit from a distance, we have this fantastic user community. It's the biggest in the world. So uh, the, the idea with campus is really how can we better collaborate together so we can go faster, innovate, get more ideas and uh, really multiply each other uh, even more than uh, addition uh, of our competence. So that, that's why campus is so exciting. Thank you, Olivier. So look, you're traveling a lot to many regions and uh, how would, and you meet a lot of clinicians. So how would you describe the IBA proton therapy community? Well, obviously the traveling has been uh, a bit less in the one last one year and a half, uh, of course. But I've still been out there and, you know, whenever I'm out there with clinicians or with medical physicists, you know, in our community, you know, I'm always surprised and energized about how they want to share their knowledge, share successes, but also share failures. And that's where really, you know, the knowledge comes from. And it, that has really been one of the inspiring ideas about creating this platform. You know, we should not do it on a one-on-one -on -one every time, but we should create and share that in, in the community. And, you know, I think we really have this, this value of these world-class experts in our community. And if we can all bring that together and everybody benefit from that knowledge, you know, there is one important uh, passion that, that, all, uh, that we all have in common, and that's really improving the treatment for the patients. And that's what it's all about. You know, we want to create this so that we can accelerate and improve the treatment for patients out there. Absolutely. Th thank you, Luke. And we will hear more from our experts uh, later on in a few minutes. So. And so, Emmanuel, you and Luke have both mentioned that campus is built on three pillars. Can you tell us more how the community will learn, share and excel with campus? Yeah, absolutely. Campus is really the place for sharing indeed uh, with the community, not only digitally, but also uh, in the real life. So campus will be a, a digital platform where um, any stakeholders can access resources like webinars, clinical highlights, podcasts, or scientific papers. So those information will be accessible directly through this online platform. And some more specific content like uh, trainings, uh, in discussion forums, but also specific uh, system performance of uh, centers will be accessible to IBA users only. This is really what we have learned through the COVID crisis. If you think about it, you know, we've been uh, unable to travel for almost uh, two years now. Uh, and still, uh, thanks to the, the power of the digital platform, we managed to be connected to a certain point. I would argue that we have never been so connected to our install base and, and users. Uh, of course, we miss uh, the, the physical meeting, uh, but, but I think what we have seen is that digital platform can be very, very powerful in this uh, as well. So uh, with, with campus, then we, we can actually have more interaction uh, and still meet on a regular basis, uh, face to face. 
Yes, Olivier, I couldn't agree more. And it's true that uh, we've been missing those real-life interactions in the past few months. But fortunately, we see more and more of those uh, in-person meetings coming back again. And campus is really what will also foster the real-life interactions. We want to have in-person uh, trainings on site. We want to have um, site visits as well as uh, IBA users meetings. So those are great interactions for the whole community to meet and interact and for instance the next users meeting is going to take place in June 2022 uh, with the particle center in Leuven and this is really a great opportunity to meet and interact with the IBA users so that we build together the future of photon therapy. Thank you Emmanuel. So a closing word Olivier? Yeah actually I recently came back from Estro and uh, When you come back from such an event and had the opportunity to interact with the user community, you feel so energized and full of new ideas and, uh, uh, you know, uh, meeting people and so on and so forth, uh, and pride as well of, of what we are doing together. And I think this is what really Campus is all about, is how do we make this uh, an experience, almost a daily experience, when you can connect to what we achieve together, which is just amazing. Uh, I, I really believe this will help us to accelerate and be more connected, of course, but also uh, bring new technology and new solutions faster to uh, the people, the patient that really need it and uh, continue to achieve what we really would like to do as a community is to treat uh, many patients around the world. So thank you for that. I think it's a great uh, initiative and a great product launch. So uh, looking forward to see it live. Thank you, Olivier. So this was a great first overview of what Campus is all about. Now let's explore in more detail each of the three pillars, learn, share and excel. There is no better expert to talk about learning and training than our next speaker, who is one of the principal advisors of Campus. Joining us from Philadelphia, we have invited Professor James Metz, Chair of Pen Medicine Department of Radiation Oncology. Hello, Jim. Thank you for joining us today. Could you tell us more about the long-standing training collaboration between UPenn and IBA? Hello, American. Thank you so much for having me today. Um, we've been really great partners since we opened our center back in 2010. And IBA and, and Penn Medicine have worked together to develop a series of proton therapy clinical education programs. And, and the idea is to provide everything necessary for centers that open with the highest quality and expertise in delivering proton therapy. Uh, the training consists of e-learning modules, which are housed on our website, Oncolink. Um, it's followed by a multi-week internship at the University of Pennsylvania, hands-on experience, so people can feel sure about going on and opening their own center. And we really think this is critical to work with this team with a hands-on experience. So far, over 400 clinical professionals have already benefited from this training, and it really ensures that patients are treated with the highest quality, safe care, which we all want out of this. So um, we really want to make sure that your team, you, everyone on campus gets an, a flavor of this. So we're going to house some of these modules on campus to get a taste, and then they can enroll for further the full program if they would like. But we think it's a great opportunity for training people going forward. Thank you, Jim. I, I certainly can confirm that those trainings have been extremely useful. Uh, we've had lots of customer testimonials in that sense. So it is truly helpful for new users to spend quality time at a very experienced center such as yours. But I guess learning is, is not only at the start of the journey, it's a continuous process. And proton therapy, as we all know, constantly evolves with new developments such as dynamic arc or, or conformal flash. On that topic, UPenn and IBA have been collaborating on research and development for years. Could you tell us more about the latest results in, in flash research? Yes, thank you so much, American. And I, one of the things that excites me about proton therapy is there's so much yet to do. And we've worked on so many things with IBA over the years, from cone beam CT to gantry rolling floors to IMPT. And flash is really the next iteration of where we're going forward. You know, we've been working on this project for a couple of years with IBA, first really defining what the needs are in regards to technical delivery of protons in a flash mode. And then we moved on to validating flash biologically in, um, in cells and then in small animals and mice. 
And most recently, we completed a large trial with dogs with osteosarcoma. All of these trials have continued to show that FLASH results in reduced toxicity with the same tumor control. If we ultimately validate this in humans, this is a complete game changer to oncology as a whole, not just proton therapy. We hope to be moving into a clinical trial with IVA within the next year. That's incredibly exciting and really looking forward to that. Um, so I'm really looking forward to getting this information on campus, to providing this continuing evolution of information, information on campus going forward. So I think this is a great opportunity for all of us to learn through the campus product. Absolutely, and I think you perfectly illustrate how campus will help users to develop skills, Jim. Uh, it's true for newcomers to proton therapy, and it's also true for advanced users who want to explore new developments such as Flash. So thank you so much for sharing your experience and contributing to campus, Jim. My pleasure, I'm Eric, and I appreciate that IBA is putting campus together and bringing people together, because there's no one institution that's going to be able to do this and drive the field forward on their own. We really have to do this in collaboration with all of us together. So thank you for providing this environment. Great, Jim. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Metz, for sharing your views on the learning opportunities of campus. Next, we're joined by another principal advisor of campus, Professor Mazal, and a special guest from IBA, Sophie Gillis, Clinical Solutions Director. Welcome to the stage, Sophie. Thank you for joining us. Hi, Courtney. Professor Mazal. Uh, you've been working in the field of proton therapy for many years now. You were previously involved in the Center Proton Therapy at Institut Curie in Paris, and then founded a new center, Chiron Salud Proton Therapy Center in Madrid, where you're head of medical physics. Could you tell us more about your take on the role of the PT community going from one center to another? Hello, Carla. Hello, Sophie. And hello, everybody. Um, yes, indeed. What is um, nice to say is that in spite of having more than 50 years, proton therapy is continuously evolving. And if I start with myself, I will always keep in my mind, uh, 30 years ago being trained in Boston in US, and maybe then going to work in Wanji in China. And that was the basis to try to build first in Paris with a Proteus Plus One Center, and now in Madrid with Kiron Salud uh, using a Proteus One. Uh, in all of those projects, what I saw is the importance of training. Uh, the idea is that with the campus, we could try to build what the committee needs. Uh, that means that the experimented people will share their background and everybody will learn with the new cameras, new ideas, and new people being involved with, with passion. Uh, that can be applied to all the fields, and that is uh, technology, clinics, uh, development, and research. And I can tell you, building a new center is something passionate. It takes your life, but uh, we are there for that. It's a very nice project. Thank you, Professor Mazal. And Sophie, you're leading the team of clinical application specialists at IBA. Could you tell us more about your team's role in the campus community in regards to training and education opportunities? Yes, so the application specialist team is a group of experienced medical physicists, and they provide support to our users uh, in their clinical operations. So they provide uh, on-site training at the startup of the system, uh, but also at any other moment in time where there are major changes to the system. And in between, they continuously provide remote support for any application question the customer might have. Um, so in that way, it really complements the training that were, was talked about by Dr. Metz and uh, Professor Mazal. And Professor Mazal, could you talk a little bit more about the training at UPenn? Okay, as uh, Sophie and Jim explained already, the training is a, a long process with different steps and something that will continue. Um, the way we build the team at uh, Quiron Salud has mainly three steps. At the very beginning, we hire a few experimented people, two or three. Uh, then we hire people with a very restrictive process and we send them to UPenn. That, that was the core of the training where everything is concentrated and they become already confident on themselves. But at that time, we also send them to other IBA centers like uh, Shreveport and Trento. I want to say thank you to all of them for the, the way they train our people. And then the third level is that when we were already in clinics and we were increasing patients, we hire people that we train by ourselves. And I think that now is time after one or two years to send some people again to have a new training, but now they have a specific questions. The idea is that in the same way that uh, we got help from other centers, 
we should like also to contribute to the community. And Sophie, could you tell us a little bit about more the training opportunities on campus? Yes, indeed. Uh, uh, the platform of campus opens new opportunities for training and adds more flexibility to it. So it's not only uh, it can be a, a repository of all the trainings that has been provided to, to the center and make it available and centralize it, but also it op opens opportunities to, to add online modules in there. And that can be of use for new staff coming in into the centers, but also, for example, for staff that could not attend the classroom meeting for or a classroom training, for example. So in that way, we focused for the first modules that we, we are developing on a basic uh, Proton user training that will be completely online. So that focuses on the use of the system and also uh, the technical background of the system. And so people can follow that at their own pace. There will be some uh, quizzes at the end so we can certify people that they have been following that training successfully and so in that, in that way it could be a base for uh, the training that's done in the centers themselves uh, that's of course more wide but it can be a base on the clinical use and the safe use of the system itself. Great, thank you Sophie and thank you Professor Mazal. It's been a very informative exchange of views between the two different sides of the IBA community. And now let's move on to the next session where we'll discuss the next chapter, the pillar of share. So let's now connect with another key opinion leader in the field of proton therapy, Professor Hans Langendijk, Chair of Radiation Therapy at the University Medical Center in Groningen. Uh, Hans, hello and thank you for joining us today. Hello, everyone. It's really a pleasure to, uh, to be here and uh, thank you for having me. Hans, you've been working in proton therapy for a number of years at UMCG. Could you tell us more about the potential of collaborating with the IBA PT community? Well, proton therapy is an advanced form of radiotherapy and that is constantly evolving to offer the best care to our patients. At UMCG, we work very hard on research to contribute to the development of this treatment. And one great example of collaboration with the IVA community is the work we are currently doing on dynamic arc therapy. It actually originated from a presentation from the Proton Therapy Center in Beaumont that I saw at ASTRO and the discussion I had with them on the IVA booth. I wanted to explore if I could link the work on dynamic arc therapy with the model-based approach. And my guess was that by using dynamic arc, we can further reduce the risk of complications. And moreover, it will qualify more patients for proton therapy. Uh, indeed, I remember very well you sitting at our booth uh, and uh, at one of the media expert sessions. And I believe it was Dr. Ding and Dr. Kabulizadeh from the Beaumont team who were presenting their work. So this is a great example of real life interactions between IBA users that actually led to a collaborative research. Uh, so is your team still in contact with the team at Beaumont or, or others on, on Dynamic Arc? Absolutely. Uh, IBA has formed the Dynamic Arc Consortium with a few centers and we regularly exchange our views and progresses on how we can make proton therapy therapy in general and dynamic arc therapy in particular even better. So I think the dynamic arc is certainly a promising development in terms of potential clinical benefits, but also speed and simplicity of treatment. Uh, great, great to hear. So, so regarding the campus platform itself, could you give us your view on, on how this can help the community? Yes, I think there are lots of things that we could share with our peers. Here at UMCG, we are keen to contribute to campus to share the results, especially on the model-based approach, for example, and exchange with the community to develop proton therapy further together. So if we make progress and manage to convince governments to reimburse more patients for more indications, why not share this with the community? It can benefit all centers and especially all patients. So one great tool on the platform I saw is the forum to exchange with peers. And I'm really looking forward to the discussions that will arise from the forum trail on research, for example, as this is a topic where interactions and collaborations with other protein therapy professionals can be useful to make protein therapy move forward. 
Great, uh, Hans. This is this is a great example. You have been indeed leading the way on in the Netherlands on on driving reimbursement for more indications using the model-based approach. And indeed, I would dream of uh, of having more more governments following that approach and having uh, a more uniform uh, policy across countries to uh, to expand the indi indications that can be treated with proton therapy and reimbursement. So, uh, Hans, thank you so much for sharing your experience. We are very curious to hear about your progress and the progress of your team and discover them on campus. You're welcome. It was really a pleasure to be here and let's make sure we continue this collaboration even if the pandemic travel makes travel more difficult. Absolutely. And I, I hope we can meet in person very soon again. I hope so too. Thank you very much. Thank you. I am now connected with Professor Jalali, Medical Director at Apollo Proton Cancer Center in Chennai, India. Hello, Professor Jalali. Hello, Courtney, and thank you for this kind invitation. As one of the principal advisors of campus, could you give us an example of what you think will be most beneficial for users like yourself to share within this proton therapy community? I believe there are a vast number of elements that can be shared to the benefit of the community. I think it's a very interesting and exciting time in the PT world as such. And there are because of two factors. And one is there is an increasing interest and and more and more number of centers starting throughout the world globally. And also there is more and more, more data coming up and there is also maturation of the data, which is also equally important. So this is a perfect time for the IPA to launch a platform such as the campus. And this type of platform was actually missing in the PT community. It's also important that we not only discuss and share within the PT community as such, but it's also a perfect time to expand our horizons and also educate and liaise with our other oncology community people, including the medical oncologists, the surgical oncologists, the oncology uh, community in general, but also the general medical fraternity as well. We are here at in Chennai at the Apollo Proton Cancer Center, which still is the only proton therapy center in the South Asia, and we just did a little calculation actually caters to a very vast population almost up to 3.5 billion people. And as the first proton therapy now for the last two and a half years, we also have a responsibility to educate the medical community on the benefits that the proton therapy can bring to the patients and the opportunities are enormous. In this regard, we recently uh, did at the first Apollo proton practicum, which was telecast and uh, live and was attended by 400 to 500 people throughout the world. And this was an amazing experience that all of us had because we went through right from the patient selection. We also went through the different steps of the modern contemporary proton therapy and also looked at the data and also what, what, what is like, what is likely to be the future development. As Professor Lang and Dick was saying earlier, why keep this for ourselves? Why not share it with the community through campus? And I'm certain that as the community grows, IBA campus will be a wonderful platform to reach out not only to the local community, but also to our various international connections with webinars, with also sharing of the data with key publications, articles and training and so on and so forth. Thank you very much, Professor Jalali. We look forward to seeing what you and your team add to the campus platform. Thank you very much, Courtney. It was a great pleasure. I'm excitedly looking forward to it too. Now that we understand how campus will help the community learn and share about proton therapy, it's time to discuss how campus will help our users maximize their center's performance in order to excel in the field. Let's now connect with our special reporter, Peter Rolls, live from IBA headquarters in leuven le neuve Belgium, and meet with Isabel Hennen, Director of Service Operations at IBA Proton Therapy. Hello, Peter. Hello, everyone. I'm standing here in front of the IBA Beam Factory, the heart of the IBA headquarters based in leuven le neuve a couple of kilometers away from Brussels in Belgium. This is the place where most of the IBA cyclotrons are being assembled, tested, and prepared before they are sent to a customer. Let's go inside and meet with Isabel Hennen. She's the Director of Service Operations at IBA Proton Therapy. 
Hello, Isabel. Hello, Peter. Hello, everyone. Isabel, you have been leading the Proton Therapy Service Operations team for the past three years. What could you say about the IBA community and the communication between the users and the side teams? We all know that communication is the key to any success, and it's also the most difficult art to master. I'm a true believer that an open communication between both teams, the customer team in the field and the IBS side teams, is a key asset that brings tremendous value to both parties. Clearly, together we are stronger. We have teams working on site and remotely to ensure the best performance of the daily operations for the clinical teams and their patients. With the largest proton therapy installations set up over time, we at IBA can leverage on the experience acquired over the past 20 years. We can apply this knowledge to the benefit of the entire community. We are leveraging new developments in machine learning and artificial intelligence to continuously improve. How do you think campus can support in the evolution of proton therapy operations on site? As you know, communication is always a challenge. Campus will be a tool of great value to support us in our collaboration with our proton therapy community within IBA. But let me first clarify one important point. Campus is not there to replace the side teams. On the contrary, it will help the teams with the storing and communicating key information more efficiently. Also, a close collaboration between the teams at different centers help enormously in improving our daily operations. Campus will offer a single interface for the users to access the required information on their system and make the most of their proton therapy equipment. In addition to the large library of learning and sharing resources that will be made available to them. You know, I will only be happy when we have happy customers and a 100% of time everywhere. We will use any tool and any initiative that help us in that direction. Campus is one of those tools. Thanks a lot for these useful insights, Isabel. Thank you, Peter. Back to the studio. The last principal advisor to join us today is Dr. Mar Pankuk, Director of Medical Physics at Northwestern Medicine Chicago Proton Center. Mark, hello. Could you tell us about your experience at Northwestern Medicine and the collaboration with IBA? Sure, Emmerich, I can fill you in. We opened up our center 11 years ago and the collaboration with NM and IBA has been really great. We have ex excellent teamwork with our, our local team here. And this has really led to 99% uptime, which is of course great for our clinic and great for our patients. And the effort to remain on the cutting edge of technology for our physicians, we've completed several upgrades, including pencil beam scanning and cone beam CT. We've been able to do this with minimal disruptions to the clinic and no downtime after the upgrades have been completed. Wow, you, you seem to have reached uh, the Excel level of uh, campus already by making the most out of your PT center. So very good and, and insightful to hear. Um, as an experienced user, Mark, you, you also had a chance to attend several IBA user meetings. Can you tell us about your experience and what you got out of those events? Oh, yeah, yeah. The IBA users meetings are really great. Um, besides being an opportunity to share knowledge and experience, these are great ne networking events where we can talk to our colleagues. Unfortunately, this year with COVID, we weren't able to do that, but I'm really glad that IBA put in place these user breakout sessions. So in these sessions, we were able to discuss clinical and technological topics, and we gave the users opportunities to connect and talk online. I'm really excited because I think campus platform will enable us to go even one step further by allowing us kind of continuous interactions and communications and not just at these periodic meetings, which are very helpful. Absolutely. You're, you're spot on, Mark. And that's exactly what we are trying to do with campus is to uh, enrich and complement those face to face meetings by online interactions, whether it's through discussions and webinars or whether it's uh, online through the new campus platform. This is really uh, adding one step to, uh, to the picture. So uh, thank you so much for uh, sharing your experience. I think it is very interesting for the users who recently joined the user community of IBA to hear uh, the perspective of more mature centers such as yours with your 11 years of experience. So thank you so much for sharing that with us today, Mark. Oh, yeah. And I, and I want to really thank IBA for fostering all these interactions, both online and in person. 
I think to be a successful proton community, we really all need to collaborate in this evolving field of proton therapy. Thank you so much, and I'm looking forward to seeing you soon. Another great testimonial. Thank you, Mark. You have now heard about campus from a wide variety of people, and it's time to conclude this exciting launch event with Emmanuel. Emmanuel, can we now take a look at this brand new platform and see how to access it? Sure. I invite everyone to simply go on IBA uh, Proton Therapy website or directly on campus-iba.com. Once you get there, you will be able to fill in your profile, whether you're an IBA user or a non-user. And you will also be able to fill in your preferences on your first connection so that campus will give you a customized experience based on your needs, your habits and your interest in proton therapy. And now you should be able to navigate through the different resources, whether it's uh, webinars, clinical highlights, uh, uh, articles and publications. There are also some specific content like uh, forums or trainings that are accessible to IBA users only. Well, this platform is really about uh, sharing and contributing. So we really invite everyone just to go there and share the content because it's a place where you can share your work and learn the work of the others. The more we will share, the more we will get out of it. So for this launch, we are going to offer a special prize to the first 30 participants who share content on campus. So I invite you to register now and then to share with your community. Great. Thank you, Emmanuel. This has been an exciting launch event with lots of interesting information. I would now like to ask our IBA experts to join us again at the table to take a few questions that the audience might have. Thank you for joining us. Please keep sending us your questions in the chat box. Amrik, do we have any questions from the audience? Yes, Courtney. As a matter of fact, there are several questions that have been addressed directly by the team as we speak, but they've also selected a few uh, that are most relevant for the audience. So here is the first one. These kinds of platforms are not new. So what makes campus unique? Maybe Luke, you can address that question. Sure. And indeed, there are some platforms out there which uh, could be uh, considered similar. However, what ca makes campus really unique is uh, firstly, you know, it is 100% dedicated to proton therapy and that does not exist yet. Uh, out there. And secondly, the IBA community, which is really the community that, that creates this, this platform, you know, they are by far the most experienced community out there. Cumulatively, they have treated more than 100,000 patients and we are, we are close to reaching 100 uh, treatment rooms out there, which are in clinical operations. And that's, that's really unique as well. Yes, indeed. I think our user community is what is the biggest asset mm -hmm. uh, of IBA. And uh, we know it will be instrumental to uh, the development of proton therapy. There's so much we can still do in terms of innovation in proton therapy. And this will happen thanks to the exchange between our users and the expertise of IBA. Uh, every year we have our user meeting, which is great. It's a fantastic opportunity to exchange. And what we want with campus is to facilitate that, almost that it becomes possible for us to interact every day. Uh, and that's the whole idea of campus. I mean, the name says it all. Thank you, Olivier. Another question? Who will get access to the information shared on campus? Emmanuel, can you address this one? Yes, sure. Well, actually, there are lots of resources on campus that are accessible to any stakeholders interested in proton therapy. It ranges from webinars to uh, scientific publications or specific podcasts. Uh, and then there are some specific information that are accessible to IBA users only, such as the trainings, the discussion forums, and uh, obviously there are also the uh, information linked to a specific center, like the performance of the system, that will be accessible only to that proton therapy user. Great. Thanks, Manuel. So the next question is, will we be able to contact other IBA users through the platform? Maybe Emmanuel, you can also answer that one. Yes. Well, actually, we invite everyone to fill in their contact, de contact details where they put their profile on campus. 
and uh, this will enable the interactions within the community, but obviously they can put in their preferences if they agree or not to share those uh, confidential information, and for IBA's policy, we will respect that privacy, but we expect most of the interactions to come through the discussion forums. Thanks, Emmanuel. And how often will you add new content on campus? Sophie, can you address this one? Yes, so campus is really there to stimulate the exchange. So obviously IBA will put regularly new content on, on, on the platform, like digest of new articles, the webinars that have been recorded, things like that. But the real value comes from uh, the community sharing their knowledge, their problems, their solutions, how they uh, go about things there. Um, there are already some uh, some examples out there. There is the, the training from UPenn. There are practica from uh, Apollo Hospitals, for example, the research from UMCG that will be shared. So the value and, and, and the richness of, of, of campus is, is there to collaborate and to, to, to be there to in the most fastest way to move on with, uh, with proton therapy. Thank you, Sophie. And thank you, everyone, for joining us. We have more questions that came through the chat, but I hope many of yours have been answered. If not, please feel free to contact us directly on campus. Indeed. Well, Courtney, I believe we have uh, reached the end of this event. I would like to thank all the guests around the table uh, and, of course, you for watching and also my co-presenter, Courtney, who certainly have a career as a TV star in front of you. <laughs> so we hope you enjoyed the session and have now a good understanding of what campus is. We wish you all a very, very good day and we look forward to seeing you all very soon on campus.